Three, go. All right. In this episode from Ink Geeks Presents, our Be Heard series. So this is our interview series that we do with amazing tattoo artists. So we here with Chris right now. Obviously, he's in the middle of doing his thing right now. So Chris, tell us the name of your shop, man, where we located at right now. Um, we're over here in Milwaukee on the east side. Uh, it's off of uh, off of Murray and Greenwich. Shop is called the Ghost Light Tattoo Parlor. Okay. And now tell us what what went into that to that thinking of the name of Ghost Light Tattoo Parlor. What does that name mean to you? Um, the name itself comes from two different meanings. Um, one is like a, a ghost light is something that is like left on in like a theater for like ghosts to like perform when everybody's not in. It's kind of like a, it's a it's an homage to like the dead that like still act through death. Dope. For the okay. ghosts. Um, and then also ghost light is like a star that has died but we still see it from Earth because that light hasn't ended yet. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't come up with the name. Zach Black came up with the name. Mm -hmm. uh, we were going to change uh, Serenity when we changed it to River West Tattoo. We were the ghost of River West Tattoo. Everybody voted for River West. So when I got this place, I asked Zach if it was okay if I used that, that idea from him. Okay. Because I really fell in love with him. Okay. <laughs> Definitely a, a deep name there. And uh, so we're just gonna get started with just some other questions as well. Tell us how long have you been tattooing, man? I've been tattooing for 10 years. Uh, I started in Milwaukee. Uh, Ruben Alcantar and uh, Marcos kind of like guided me along in the very beginning, you know, just out of my house. And uh, I had support through like friends and family. And then Paris Crosley picked me up at a convention. So my first shop was uh, at Hustle Hands and Paris kind of like taught me most of what I know and the uh, main reason why I'm here today. Okay. And I'm always having like Ruben in my life too. All right, nice. Consistently that like, you know, embedded local support. Right. From like, you know, Ruben's been tattooing for 20 plus years since he was like a little kid. Okay. And his dad's shop, you know what I mean? Right. He, he like lives and breathes tattooing, so just those, just having him in my corner was, was big and, and beneficial for me. And uh, yeah, 10 years ago, man, just getting tattooed at Body Ritual and, mm -hmm. and having a relationship with him. Very nice. So what, what started your interest in it? Like what initially inspired you to want to become a tattoo artist? Ooh, fuck. Um, I guess it's something that I always wanted to do as a kid. I mean, I remember like asking to go into tattoo shops in like, you know, the early 90s as a child and my family being like, dude, no, like that's where you go like, <laughs> as a criminal or that's right. where you go and whatever, if you want to be unsafe. Right, right. It, it definitely used to be taboo in our society, you know? Yeah, definitely. My family wasn't about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I didn't think it was a thing for a while until I, I really started getting tattooed and being around like, you know, like people like Ruben and realizing that I could actually like this so right but yeah that's definitely always been a thing in my head you know okay now at this point you've been doing it for some years now so what still gives you that that motivation for creating uh, I don't want to do anything else really um, it's not that like I have one thing that gives me motivation more than it is like this is just absolutely what I want to do forever so like finding like inspiration and in other people mm -hmm. and um, just always like trying to be better and learn mm -hmm. and never like settling right. for like 
the place that I'm at, where it is basically like just keeps me, I guess, motivated. Right, keep, yeah. keep driving you. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like evolution. That's a huge word for us. We always want to be constantly evolving. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what, what qualities do you think make you a good tattoo artist? Like what qualities do you see uh, in, in a lot of, you know, tech, a lot of quality tattoo artists, do you feel? Um, I mean, qualities that I see in a good tattoo artist would definitely be like, just, just love for art. And, uh, and man, that's a hard one. Cause I don't think I'm a very good tattoo artist. Um, but, we seen a lot of your work, man. I think you're being a little <laughs> modest right now. I mean, when you say that, I think of like, you know, like Michael Perry and uh, and like the, the patience that I see in, in people who like I look up to and um, being able to overcome the craziest like situations and obstacles in their life. Uh -huh. Like I see you like makes them great makes them like really really awesome tattooers you know like they just don't give up in the face of anything right you know and like they care about art yeah they care about their clients and what they're putting on them they're like they're tattooing for 10 11 12 30 years down the line of that tattoo uh -huh. you know that's what makes a great tattoo artist at the end right yeah that's that's amazing and uh, speaking of newer tattoo artists, we saw recently uh, on your Instagram page that uh, it looked like you were working with a newer apprentice. Yeah, recently took on a new apprentice, uh, Andre Colbert. Um, I met Andre a few years back when I joined the, the Walker's Point uh, Collective. Uh, he'd been asking me from, from the very beginning to apprentice him. And I pretty much told him what I tell everybody else is like, don't do an apprenticeship. Uh -huh. uh, just go like, figure it out, do it okay. yourself. Cause okay. that's what I did. And then like, also like, get into a shop immediately. Right. Um, through a lot of that, you know, like he started listening to little things that I would say like, oh, well just do this, go, you know, go paint this or go look this up or whatever. And uh, he was doing that actively and, and sending me stuff. So he like, you know, he's like, hey, what, what should I buy or whatever? Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh, well, this is like, that like, you know, that are good and high quality. And he's like sending me the receipts. And I'm like, hey, you just, he just did it. All right, that's <laughs> nice. Like, and then uh, he got like some practice skin and did a practice skin tattoo at his house okay. and uh, sent me the picture. And I was like, you're, you are like really good already. This nice. is crazy. Okay. And then we started like uh, painting the murals together and like he's just asking me again, like, come on, man, I want to apprentice you. I want to do realism, like all this. And I was like, oh yeah, that's that's sick. Like I, I see what you're doing, it's tight. And then, um, you know, his, his best friend, or one of his really good friends is Chacho Lopez. And he was like, I think Chacho is gonna let me at Walker's Point. And that's when I knew, I was like, well, man, I really have to like yeah. make this move now. And it was kind of like a transitional period for the shop where suddenly we had a space available. Okay. So, you know, I did the thing, I went into Walker's Point, I talked to Chacho, I talked to Julian, I kind of like asked him like, yo, I know this is your homie, I know that you said you would do it, but have an open spot, he wants to learn realism, like, and they were like, yes, absolutely. Like, that's, uh, what we want to see Dre in there too. So. Yeah. And that's kind of how that happened. All right, that's dope right there. So it sounded like he has one of those key elements that you were just referring to as far as he has just a passion for, for the art. Yeah, he, um, he has absolutely shown that Tattooing is what he wants to do forever. Mm -hmm. To me, that is the most important step in becoming a tattoo artist. Because this isn't like, um, 
a come in and go out type of deal for me. Right. Um, if you're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it forever. It's like a poor life decision, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because it takes so many years to like master it and, and pay homage and show respect and do like good tattoos on people, right. you know? Right. Um, he, he does several other things. He's incredibly talented at mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he, while he has his own businesses going and his own, like, production going and tours, he just expressed to me, like I said, that with all that going on, all he wants to be and all he sees himself is as a, is a tattooer. Um, and, like, so I, I tested him a little bit, and there he is right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, like, look, you gotta, you know, there's a few things you gotta get done. Number one, I gotta be, uh, number two is gonna be, uh, you know, doing the watercolor of traditional tattoo artists' work and reproductions of that. Okay. And then number three would be uh, recreating a photo on printer paper with colored pencil. Okay. And like, so he did that right there, which is that baby. So that's all colored pencil right there. And then he did the other watercolors in like a week and a half. Okay. And I was like, okay, man, you are okay. super talented. You're right. super ambitious. Right. Right. Like, that's all we got to get put into that right there. Yeah. So. How y'all doing? What's up? Good, good. This is uh, the guys who do ink geeks on our Instagram. Oh, word. That's yeah, what's up, man. Right. 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 Alright, that's me too, man. Yeah, just getting some good good words about you right here. Oh, that's what's up. He's just being nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not nice, you know. That's not good. Alright, so transitioning a little bit. We all know that 2020 has been completely unpredictable so far. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll definitely be one that's going to be remembered in history. Yeah. All right. So uh, I wanted to ask you about s some of these great murals we've been seeing popping up in the city. So when did you decide to either do your first mural or participate in one? Um, you know, I did I did some murals with uh, Walker's Point Collective. And, uh, you know, one of my biggest influencers on that would be Chacho Lopez. And working with him back in the day, we did uh, Nomad, we did Sprecher, we did Outside of uh, Cafe Hollander. And um, he just really, like, sparked this, like, like, just go out and do it. Like, it's something Chacho always said. You're like, hey, how do you do that? And he'd be like, just do it. And you're like, I, I, I hate you. Because you're so good at it, and you're just telling me to do it. Like, okay, fine, whatever. Right. And it's discouraging at first, but then, like, you listen to him, mm -hmm. and it works. So, I was on River West's, uh, you know, neighborhood page, just reading stuff as I do late at night when I'm bored. And um, a building owner that owns this building on uh, Holt and, uh, and North, like just it used to be an old like convenience store that somebody ended up dying at they closed it down and it's just been storage okay. and it looks boarded up it's like a parking lot it's just a new space and it, and it kind of looked messed up uh -huh. and he asked like if anybody was interested in uh doing like a george floyd memorial just like let him know right and i just commented like fuck yeah let's do it mm -hmm. And then uh, there was like a ton of interest. And I was like, cool. Uh, he didn't really know what to do with all that information. Okay. It's just like, you know, he's just a property owner. Where he got to like organize that type of stuff. And uh, he's like, well, anybody interested, like please meet up at the property at this certain time. Um, I showed up and two other people showed up and we kind of were like, none of us wanted to do it alone. Mm -hmm. Like we were into it because the community is in it. Um, so we were like, well, how do we how do we do this? Let's start an event. Let's in, let's buy the paint. Let's invite the entire like world out to show up, whoever you are, any any experience, mm -hmm. and uh, paint. 
And like, like I said, we just followed kind of Chacho's words and we just did it. Nice. And uh, even Chacho showed up, Bardo showed up, you know, and those were like some of the top like, artists out here doing murals in the city yeah. for years and years and years. Yeah. And then the community came out and like that whole building got covered in a day. You know, it was it was beautiful to see everybody's like reactions it was. and positivity to it. it was. Um, and I can say because we was there too. I mean, and it was beautiful. It was a, a great feeling to see everybody of all different backgrounds, all different ethnicities. You know, just coming together. Yeah, I mean, we all all of us working on it felt the same. Mm -hmm. You know, right? We felt that absolutely like there was no justice being had, right. and enough was enough. Right, you know, right, and uh, I was like, What can we do? We're artists, so like, I guess you can paint, right? And, and through that is powerful, like, you know, it definitely is. And that just goes to show that everybody can contribute in their own way, you know, whatever craft that you may do, whatever skills that you may have, you know, we can all contribute because you know, it's for humanity, you know, overall. And um, that actually uh, leads me into, right into my next question was, was what kind of initially inspired your passion for the, the social justice element of it? Uh, that definitely goes back to like just being against like every system that existed in the United States as a child. Mm -hmm. uh, just everything doesn't make sense what's going on, how it's set up, you know. Um, there's so many unequal parts to our country that is ridiculous. Right? And seeing that as a child, like, was so, like, infuriating to me. And, and saying something about it as a kid and then being adults, like, just deal with it, you know. Right. So then I, I'm like, whatever, a little rebellious kid and just listening to Rage Against the Machine and like <laughs> listening to Zach Delaroca and like, you know, that transition to like going into like uh, other music and underground hip hop that was just that that's what they spoke about. Right. You know, right. they weren't focusing on the other things that kept people rich, that kept people in power. They were focusing on like real life just the injustices in America, real life like shit that all of us see mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. and, and they're saying, do something about this. Mm -hmm. Don't just look at it. You know what I mean? And even back then, we didn't have cell phones to, to record shit. Mm -hmm. They were literally like, go fucking do something about it. Mm -hmm. like, if you see injustice happening, like, you need to stand up and go stop it. Yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And not, not like, you know, whatever, candy coating any situation or whatever, like, you know, do the right thing. You are, that's good. That's you know, what it all comes out to. Like, it's yeah. just doing the right thing. Right? And so, uh, also, to piggyback off of that, um, is it ever uh, emotional when you're doing, you know, those type of murals, or even some tattoos? Did anybody come in with the... A request that kind of brings sparks emotions up out of you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's hard, you know, as an artist to not be empathetic. You know, we already as tattoo artists have to kind of like turn off certain things because we're putting people in a, a certain amount of discomfort and pain. Right. But you can't yeah, turn you it all off. Right? You know what I mean? Right. People have yeah. stories and, and reasonings for their tattoos that are sometimes incredibly emotional and deep. Mm -hmm. And when you form a, a client and artist relationship, like there's a certain amount of trust there that this tattoo is not only going to like come out and represent what they want, but that they can also share with you their story. And that happens a lot and it gets very emotional. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes down to the murals, man, that is like almost draw pure emotion yeah. a lot of the time. Especially because you're outside in the elements and 
you're you're in neighborhoods on walls that are in public spaces like anybody can go to them and lots of people do and they get emotional and like you share that with individuals excitement you know sadness and uh finally like finishing some of these like seems so like so sad it's so like I don't, I, I don't want to be painting all this stuff because I don't want these things to be happy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, but we're going to do it regardless because like, that's what brings attention to these things in a lot of fashions as far as like, the news. True. You know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't have a lot of these news stories if artists around the country and around the world weren't literally throwing it in your face. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it becomes like crazy. I've definitely like been doing murals for a few months now and for sure have just like driving at night after mural like crying. Yeah. You know, I was doing Brianna Taylor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were doing me and Ruben doing Brianna Taylor's meal Mm -hmm. and her best friend's mom that grew up with Brianna Taylor lives in Milwaukee and lives in Harlem. Oh she's here. Yeah, so like she came up and uh, her name was like Miss Candy or something, like came up and was like, I knew Brianna, I watched her go up. Mm-hmm. She's my daughter's best friend. And right there was like, fuck. Right. Like, you're always confronted with that. Right. At that same mural, we had a couple drive up and like be like, wow, this is really beautiful. We love what you're doing. What are your next plans? And I was like, I want to do a Joelle Acevedo. And the dude was like, that's my son. And it was like, we love you. Yeah, that had to be kind of mind blowing. And it's like right there, like tears, like emotion. And it's something that like, as as humans, like it's important to have those experiences and to let it happen, you know? Like, I don't know, art is an an human expression. It's gonna be super emotional and definitely has been for me. Yeah. So yeah, that's it's dope. It's dope to see that you just be passionate about these things though. Um, it's good to see that type of emotion. And like I said, out of anybody, because no matter your background or whatever, you know, we all have a lot of it's more uh we all have more things in common than than really differences. Yeah. You know. But we don't seem to see that being highlighted as much as the differences sometimes. Yeah, and that's one of my favorite musicians say, we're still not even really close to sharing things. Yeah. That's fucked up. Right. <laughs> so, um, what other type of art do you enjoy? Obviously, we heard you mention music a, a, a lot. The music is very important. Um, I do really enjoy... Uh, all performance art, um, you know, live music is is really awesome. Um, but I like watching like dance. Oddly enough, like live performance in that way, ballet, um, going to a theater. Okay. Like like the Lion King is tight. Sure. You know, like seeing a Lion King on Broadway. Is beautiful, like having those type of like experiences in art. Yeah, watching large production stuff. Um, definitely street art, though. Yeah. You know, that's very raw, and I can go and see it whenever I want. Right, and you see it regardless driving around. Like that's that's always fun. Right. Um, yeah, I mean it's all life is art. You know. That's true. Um, it is. It's never as much as some people may want to keep it in a box and just black and white. That's completely not life, you know. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it'll throw you for a loop. If you go about life thinking about it like that, it's gonna throw you for a loop a time or two. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, 